Have you ever heard of the string of pearls? No, we are not talking about a fancy new jewelry trend. China is building a chain of ports, military bases, and friendly relationships around India and the Indian Ocean. But why is China stringing these pearls together? Is China trying to strangle India's trade routes, the lifeblood of its economy? Does it aspire to become the new naval superpower in the region, eclipsing India's influence? The recent reports of a Chinese-built submarine base in Bangladesh have only intensified India's concerns. But wait, there is more. Sri Lanka just denied a Chinese spy ship access to its port. Is this a crack in the string of pearl strategy? The most recent pearl of China is Bangladesh, a nation with a long history of close ties with India. Satellite imagery revealing the construction of $1.21 billion submarine base in Cox's Bazar has sparked concerns about China's growing military footprint in the Bay of Bengal. The naval base, spread over 1.75 square kilometers would not simply be a submarine docking port, but also a maintenance and overhaul facility, which raises questions about the real intent of China. China's massive investment in the submarine base fits into its broader strategy of debt trap diplomacy. In this case, Bangladesh may find itself reliant on China for the maintenance and operation of the submarine base, further solidifying China's influence over its military infrastructure. The presence of Chinese submarines directly facing India's Andaman and Nicobar Command poses a direct security threat. The Indian Navy will need to adjust its defense posture to counter this new reality, potentially leading to increased tensions between India and China. But the real question is why Bangladesh submitting to this debt policy of China even after knowing consequences of other nations in the region? Well, the answer is domestic politics. Prime Minister Shi Kasina, known for her pro-India stance, is facing domestic criticism of her India-centric policies and a lingering undercurrent of anti-India sentiment cannot be ignored. China is adept at exploiting such regional nuances to further its own agenda. By deepening its defense ties with Bangladesh, China can potentially drive a wedge between India and Bangladesh, furthering its string of pearls ambitions. But wait did not the Chinese follow a similar playbook in the Maldives? Is there a pattern going on? China heavily invested in Maldivian infrastructure projects, pushing the country into a debt trap. This economic dependence gave China significant leverage over Maldivian foreign policy. Mutsu, the new pro-China president, rose to power partly on an India-out campaign, fueled by anti-India sentiment. This Maldivian shift towards China aligns with what is happening in Bangladesh right now. The dots connect perfectly. China capitalizes on pre-existing or cultivated anti-India sentiment to weaken India's influence. China then offers massive loans for infrastructure projects, creating economic dependence. Leaders with pro-China leanings take power, often fueled by India-out campaigns. The growing China-centric orientation creates tension in regional relationships, ultimately leading to strained ties with India. If one observes carefully, same happened in case of Sri Lanka. Has the Indian policy makers taken note? While India faces a significant challenge with China's string of pearl strategy, but the consequences for Bangladesh and the Maldives are equally concerning. Maldives have already started to feel the burn. Maldives owes China about 1.3 billion US dollars or more which is the largest by any Indian Ocean island nation. The island country's risk of external debt distress has been classified as high by the IMF, considering its total GDP is around 4.9 billion US dollars. Moreover, Maldives' sources of income are shrinking. Its tourism industry, heavily reliant on Indian tourists, has suffered due to strained India-Maldives relations. There has been a steep 33% decline in Indian tourists compared to the previous year. Now, the Maldives is forced to hold roadshows in India to push back Indian tourists' inflow, highlighting the economic damage caused by aligning with China. Maldives is now in a space where it is not able to repay Chinese loans and Chinese government is restructuring these loans, but at what cost? Chinese spy ships are now docking in Maldivian territory thereby propagating the strings of pearl strategy. It would not be a surprise that what happened in Sri Lanka's Hamban Tota port is repeated in Maldives. In the case of Hamban Tota, Sri Lanka struggled to repay Chinese loans, eventually leading to the port's lease to China for 99 years. India had to eventually aid out Sri Lanka to get a relief from the dragon's claw. Sri Lanka have now eventually learnt a lesson from the economic crisis they had gone through and denied permission for a Chinese spy ship to dock at a Sri Lankan port suggesting a potential pushback against excessive Chinese influence. But will the regional nations like Bangladesh and Maldives realize it, the sooner they do better it is for both India and these nations and eventually for this region. It is better for Indian Ocean countries like India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Maldives to sit together and rethink their polices and not let the petty domestic politics to take over and allow Dragon to take a hold.
Similar concerns loom over other countries in the region, including Myanmar, and Nepal, where China's economic investments and military ties raise questions about future access and influence. Myanmar's Cocoa Islands offer China a potential military foothold, further complicating regional dynamics and India's security calculus. India is keenly aware of the strategic threat posed by the String of Pearls. India has significantly bolstered its naval presence in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep to counter China's growing influence. This includes establishing strategically located military bases and upgrading existing infrastructure. India is actively courting other regional players and fostering stronger maritime partnerships with countries like the United States, Japan, Australia, and Vietnam. The Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, QUAD, is a key example of this approach. The String of Pearl strategy presents a complex geopolitical challenge for India. However, India's countermeasures and the evolving dynamics in the region suggest that China's plan might not be as smooth sailing as initially envisioned. The Indian Ocean is set to be a key theater in the 21st century.